Hey, good question. No, um, actually, no, it's different to, to PIPTAS. Uh, so the augmentation, see what I did there, of amoxicillin with clavulinic acid or clavulinate um, uh, is for different reasons. So let's go on a bit of a journey. Um, when antibiotics were kind of new and we'd only really just discovered them and were starting to, to look at them, uh, there was a very, very famous guy in history, 1860s, and his name is Hans Christian Graham. And what Hans Christian Graham did is he used a purple dye called gentian violet to stain the bacteria so that he could look at them through a microscope. Uh, the bacteria would take up the stain, they would turn purple, and then you could see the bacteria. Now, he was particularly interested in the early days in uh, bacteria like Staphylococcus and Streptococci and Diplococci and Gonorrhea and a number of different types of antibiotic, uh, sorry, a number of different types of bacteria that would, uh, that would turn purple so that you could study them. But then he turned his attention to um, a rod-shaped um, or bacillus bacteria called typhoid. And he went to stain the typhoid and realised that this typhoid would not stain. It, it wouldn't take up the dye. It wouldn't turn purple. Um, and so he coined the phrase, some bacteria are stain positive and some are stain negative. Uh, today, we use the term gram positive and gram negative to, to essentially illustrate the difference between those that pick up the gram stain and those that don't, gram positive, gram negative. Didn't really understand at the time what the significance of that was. Now, that's 1860s. If we fast forward now, the discovery of penicillin is around um, sort of 1920, and then another 10 years on, a fellow by the name of Flory, uh, an Australian researcher, he actually turned the mould penicillin that Fleming discovered 20 years ago, uh, he turned that into the first antibiotic. Uh, and that became our first penicillin antibiotic that was used on uh, gram-positive organisms because penicillin's really good at killing gram-positive organisms. Now, he also discovered when he tried to use penicillin on gram-negative organisms, it didn't work. Penicillin wasn't effective against gram-negatives. And so investigating why it was that the gram-negative organisms seemed to be immune to the penicillin he discovered that gram-negative organisms didn't just have a sugary coating, but they had a lipid fatty coating around the outside of the sugary coating. And it was the same fatty coating that was preventing stain from sticking to them. That's why they were gram-negative. Ironically, it was the same fatty coating that protected the bacteria from the antibiotic being able to penetrate it and break down the bacterial cell wall. So if you are a gram-negative bacteria and you've got a fatty coat around the outside of you, penicillin can't touch you. Unless I add to the penicillin a type of acid called clavulinic acid that's going to break down that fatty coat, then the penicillin can get in. I'm going to augment the penicillin, or amoxicillin in this case, so that it can kill both gram-positive and gram-negative organisms. That's why we use clavulinic acid attached to some antibiotics, to cut through that lipid membrane that's around the outside of some gram-negative organisms, increasing the spectrum or the broad-spectrum nature of those antibiotics. Hope it helps.